When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Pentecost! Today is the last of the great 50 days of Easter, and it's a special holy day. The day of Pentecost is one of the seven principal feasts of the church, and it's also one of four occasions in the church year during which baptism is the most appropriate. Of all the principal feasts and of all the days that are special for baptism, only Pentecost and All Saints Day fall into both of those categories. Today, we tend to think of Pentecost as a red day. It's one of only two red Sundays of the liturgical year, and people often like to wear red on Pentecost. However, years ago, a more common name for Pentecost was Whit Sunday because all the newly baptized would wear white. Similarly, similarly to the way Christ Mass turned into Christmas, White Sunday turned into Whit Sunday. So that's three reasons that Pentecost is particularly special. Principal feast, particularly good for baptism, the color red. Another special thing about Pentecost is that this is a holiday that was named in the Bible. Pentecost didn't become a thing because of the events that happened on that day. The events happened on that day because Pentecost was already a thing. Pentecost, literally 50 days, was and is celebrated in Jewish tradition as the festival of Shavuot. Today, rather than being called the festival of 50 days, as it was in our Acts reading, Shavuot is known as the festival of weeks. It takes place seven weeks after Pentecost, after Passover, and along with Passover and Sukkot, the festival of booths, it's one of three big pilgrimages in the Jewish year. Why does all this matter? It helps establish a tone. On that Pentecost, 10 days after Jesus ascended into heaven, there was already a festival atmosphere. Just as Jerusalem had been thronged with out-of-towners for the Passover, it was again full of pilgrims, this time to celebrate Pentecost by offering the first fruits of their wheat harvest. In the way that Memorial Day weekend is the unofficial end of spring and kicks off the summer, it's filled with family get-togethers and parties, Pentecost, or Shavuot, also marked the end of the spring growing season. And so it filled a similar role. It's a time of change, one season ending, another beginning, a good time for a party. And so it is completely fitting that this day, the day of Pentecost, is the day that the Spirit chose to show up in a new way. It's important to point out that just like Pentecost wasn't a brand new holiday, the Spirit isn't brand new either. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, has always been. The Spirit moved over the face of the waters before creation began. The Spirit showed up as pillars of smoke and pillars of fire. The Spirit spoke through the prophets throughout the story of God's people. In today's gospel, when Jesus tells the disciples that the Spirit of truth is coming, he isn't saying that someone new is coming. Instead, the Spirit is coming in a new way. Not a new thing or a new person, a new action. And that action is to be with in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which we heard today, Jesus calls the Spirit the Advocate. Other translations use helper, comforter, companion, friend, intercessor. All these words have slightly different meanings. The fact that there's so many different translations and they use so many different words is a good indication that we should go back to the original Greek and try to get a better sense of what the Gospel writer intended. The Greek word here is paraclete. It explains what the Spirit does. Para means with or alongside. Think of how we've heard para used before in terms like paralegal or paramedic. A paralegal works with a legal team, assisting and providing support. A paramedic works alongside a medical team, stabilizing a patient until they can be seen by a physician. The paraclete comes alongside us as a helper, 
comforter, companion, friend, intercessor, and advocate. All these words are correct, and we get a better sense of what the paraclete does when we hear them all. A helper, a comforter, a command companion. That sounds sweet and gentle, right? Someone to hold your hand, be with you in a difficult situation. And I think that's right. I think we experience the Holy Spirit in those ways in our lives. But I don't think sweet and gentle really tells the full story. While the disciples may have been expecting sweet and gentle, that doesn't seem to be what they got. The Acts reading tells us there came from heaven a sound like a violent wind that filled the house. It interests me that the sound was like a violent wind. It wasn't that there was a violent wind. Think how disconcerting it would be to hear wind and not feel it. A great wind that somehow doesn't tug at your clothes or lift up your hair. It's also interesting to me that the wind sound is described as violent. This isn't something gentle. It's loud. It's unruly. It has the potential to be dangerous, maybe a little out of control. This sound indicates that something big is going to happen, is already happening. Then there were the tongues of fire, and the disciples started speaking in other languages, and there was such a hubbub that they started attracting the attention of all the Jewish pilgrims who were in town from all over the place to celebrate the Pentecost holiday. In the excerpt from Acts, Acts we read today, we only heard the beginning of Peter's speech to that crowd. But at the end of chapter 2, following Peter's sermon, about 3,000 people were baptized, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. This isn't sweet and gentle work. This is bold and strong work, risky work, and a little bit dangerous, a little out of control, at least out of our control. This group made up of Jesus' followers had changed in a big way. Think about it. Twelve disciples? We know that there were more people following Jesus than that. Several we know by name. Mary Magdalene, Mary Jesus' mother, all the other Marys, Martha, Joanna, Cleopas, Barsabbas. We might imagine a hundred men and women devoted to following Jesus. Even if we increase that number to 300, in the space of a day, we're talking about 10 times as many converts. Imagine what it would feel like if next Sunday, instead of 30 people at St. Michael's, there were 330. That would be pretty exciting, but it might also feel a little out of control. It would be a little scary, a little intimidating, and we'd have to think about how things might need to change. See, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, is a helper, companion, advocate, and comforter, but the Spirit is also an instigator. The Spirit moves and things happen. That can be scary and overwhelming. The good news is that even while the Spirit instigates, giving us the inspiration and courage to try things that might be a little risky, a little scary, or even sound a little bit crazy, the Spirit also leans in close and stays with us, offering encouragement and companionship along the way. Danielle Schroyer, author and spiritual director, wrote, Without Pentecost, we'd just be people who tell Jesus' story. With Pentecost, we're people who live into Jesus' story. On this day of Pentecost, think about what it would look like for you to leave church today and go about your week with the intention and purpose of living into Jesus' story. Think about allowing the Spirit to guide you into truth. And when you begin to follow the Spirit somewhere that pushes your comfort zone a little bit, remember that the Spirit who instigates is also the Spirit who encourages, comforts, sustains, and is with you all the way. Thanks be to God.